first. He sits on a key oversight committee of the U.S. House, working on nearly $2 trillion of new coronavirus relief cash. Let's get fired up. Are we really going to get $13.2 billion from the federal government, we being state and local governments here in Illinois? Yeah, there's a very good chance that this is going to pass, Mike. Uh, you know, uh, for the last one year, uh, both the state of Illinois as well as numerous towns and villages and counties throughout the state have been um, asking for relief. Uh, just like small businesses and just like working families who've seen major holes in their budget uh, because of the pandemic, um, these other uh, state and local governments have seen their tax revenues go down dramatically, as well as expenses pile up because of the pandemic. And so um, they've asked, unfortunately, their pleas have fallen on deaf ears until now. Uh, well, but well, can I stop you there? I mean, it's not that their pleas have fallen on deaf ears, it's that Senator Mitch McConnell, when he was majority leader up until a few days ago in the Senate, said this kind of money would be a bailout of poorly governed high tax states like Illinois, New York, and California. I think the problem for his logic is that a lot of states that were not blue, that never voted for a Democrat for U.S. Senate, were equally complaining uh, about uh, how they needed federal aid and it wasn't forthcoming. I'll just give you one example. Uh, a friend and colleague of mine is Senator Bill Cassidy of Louisiana. And he has been repeatedly asking for this type of aid uh, because his state has been crushed, um, just like other states. And so now we're finally getting to brass tacks. Um, the subcommittee and the committee that I uh, chair and sit on respectively have jurisdiction over this particular issue and the upcoming COVID package. And so I'm determined to make sure that we get it through. It can be used for revenue that's lost. Obviously, it can be used for extra expenses. Um, I mean, so this is why Governor Pritzker, who said he was going to raise the income tax, he's now saying he's not going to do that. Right. I think that taxpayers just can't bear a tax increase at this point, Mike. And it's not their fault that we've gone into a pandemic, uh, a once in a century pandemic. And so let's be very practical here. Let's use this federal money uh, for the uses it, it was intended. And let's make sure that everyone can stay afloat um, and kill the coronavirus and get the economy back on track. So what do you mean when you say that those who oppose this kind of $13.2 billion payment to state and local governments in Illinois, that, that they are the ones who really want to defund police. What do Democrats mean by that? Well, we've seen over the past one year, Mike, that one million plus uh, government workers, including police officers, have been laid off by state and local governments because of the pandemic. In fact, I just received letters from the village of Schaumburg and Hoffman Estates telling me that their first responders, unfortunately, are on the chopping block and they have a hiring freeze in place. These police officers, these healthcare workers are precisely the people that we need to cope with this pandemic, and we should not be talking about laying them off. Also attached to this, he hopes, will be restoration of the state and local tax deduction, the so-called SALT deduction, that I know uh, some folks in your district uh, are unhappy that it's now capped at $10,000. It used to be unlimited. Unfortunately, it was a very politically cynical move uh, on the part of the previous administration to target blue states and um, places like Illinois uh, for that particular cap. Um, and it affects a lot of middle class people in my area in the suburbs of Chicago. A lot of middle class taxpayers are adversely affected because of that cap. Um, and I think that um, it should be removed uh, if we really want to help middle class taxpayers. And uh, what about the $15 minimum wage? President Biden has said he thinks that it won't fly with the Senate parliamentarian. Um, should that be part of this package or should that be a separate vote? Um, and why? Well, I think that um, this particular $15 minimum wage, I'm a, I'm a co-sponsor of this legislation in Congress. It ramps up to $15 in, I believe, 2025. Um, you know, already a lot of states like Illinois 
are pay are have a minimum wage that's much higher than the national minimum wage of seven dollars and twenty five cents. So in fact, I think it what it does is it makes Illinois more competitive with a lot of other states that just aren't doing the right thing right now. Well, that's undeniable. Senator Durbin uh, quoted uh, uh, an Illinois restaurateur the other day saying he'd like to see the national minimum wage be what Il Illinois is phasing it in by 2024, 2025. Um, this will mean that Indiana and Wisconsin and Iowa won't have that differential. But That's the right. argument, but, but I think the CBOE came up with an estimate that uh, more than a million jobs will be eliminated by this, Congressman. Yes, I, I, I saw the CBO analysis. On the other hand, the CBO analysis also said that there'd be um, in their opinion, uh, much greater or less inequality, income inequality. Um, and in terms of state output, if you look at the output of each state, um, uh, a lot of states actually do uh, better when their lower wage workers have more money to spend. And guess what? They don't just watch it piling up in their bank vault, they spend it. So it has a great stimulative effect on the economy, precisely at a time when, you know, we have 10 million people who are unemployed and um, we have an economy that's in the doldrums. Why is there so much chaos in this vaccine rollout here in Illinois? What's going wrong? I'll be candid with you. You know, my office receives a lot of phone calls right now about vaccine distribution and making sure um, they know where to go for a shot. Um, I would like to see a situation, quite frankly, where the Johnson & Johnson vaccine comes online. It's uh, eligible for emergency use authorization pretty soon. It's a single shot. And that alone, I think, will help to simplify some of this present logistics. All right. Congressman Raja Krishnamurthy, thanks very much for joining us. We'll be right back after.